dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. We hail, starring Ruth Warwick in Storm Center, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where the outstanding names of stage and screen join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is Ruth Warwick, who is making a welcome return to our microphones, and our dramatic story is titled Storm Center. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is your announcer with this message of importance. Young men between the ages of 20 and 26 and one half who want to become a pilot or navigator in the U.S. Air Force, listen to this important news. Applications are being accepted now for men who can qualify for aviation cadet training. Visit your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today for full details. Only the best can be aviation cadets. Can you qualify? Now, once again, our producer. And now the curtain rises on Act One of Storm Center, starring Ruth Warwick as Ruth Chandler. The seacoast town stood in the direct path of the summer storms, which formed in the tropics to gyrate northward with thundering velocity and tremendous power. The town was not large, nor was it small. It was best known, perhaps, because of the aircraft factory of Tom Barkhurst, pilot, industrialist, sportsman, and eligible bachelor, whose house, high on the palisades overlooking the bay, was a famed showplace. It was least known, assuredly, because of a shabby awning factory nearby and a girl who worked there named Ruth Chandler. Yes, I worked there. I ran a machine. I sewed awnings. It didn't take me long to become good at it, I might add. Noon times, I'd sit and watch the airfield which ran alongside the factory, and, and I'd watch for Tom Barkhurst to come out of the hangar where he was working on an experimental model. Then I'd look up at that house of his up on the hill and dream and plan. I'd wait for that 5.30 bell, I'd cover up my machine, rush out to the street, and I'd wait for him to drive past. One day it was raining, and, and he stopped. That was worth waiting for. One left into town? What? Oh, well, well, yes, I guess so. I guess so? It was like getting wet. Oh, I don't mind it. I like the rain and the wind. I do, too, from here. You work in the field? No. Thought I'd seen you. Well, maybe you have. I work for the awning company. Well, I'd say the awning people were very fortunate. They are. Oh, you agree with me? Oh, well, you make it very easy for someone to agree with you. <laughs> you really mean that? I do. You know, I'm sure of it now. What? That I've seen you before. You want to know why? Why? Because for a long time now, I've been intending to call you up to see if you wouldn't go out with me. Oh, you have? Sure. Well, how about it? This will be fine right here. What's that? I said you can let me out here. But you... Right here, please. <sighs> Thank you very much. Are you sure this is as far as you're going? Positive. You see, I'm a girl who likes the wind, the rain, and, uh, gentlemen. Goodbye. Hey, I didn't get your name. <laughs> Well, I had to put him in his place. <laughs> he drove off. I was thinking if he had known that I'd waited on that street corner every day for three months for him to stop. Well, he did seem interested, however. <laughs> I walked on down toward the waterfront, and I wanted to see an old friend of mine, Reverend John Bateman, at the mission. Well, Ruth, come in, come in. <laughs> Hello, John. Well, Ruth, my dear. But where have you been? I've not seen you in church. Oh, I've been terribly busy. I know, but that doesn't excuse you. Well, aren't you glad I've at least come to report? It's about time, one might say. <laughs> I have more than a passing interest in you, my child. 
having once fed and clothed you. Oh, that seems so long ago. Doesn't it now? Well, John, first of all, I have a new job. Good, good. In the factory, but it pays very well. Well, that's all right. Uh, by the way, Ruth. Yes? Any young men these days that I should hear about? Oh, not over a couple of hundred. Only two hundred? Yes, I'm slipping, John. <laughs> oh, by the way, guess who picked me up today and brought me into town? Well, who, child? None other than Tom Barkers. Well, well, I've known Tom ever since he was a youngster. You have? Really? Why, sure. He comes over most every week, even now, to let me slap his ears down in a game of chess. Well, you know, he's the handsomest man. Hmm? Hmm? Mm, I'll be sure to tell him you said that. Ah, uh, don't you dare forget. Well, Tom Barkers must have dropped in for that game of chess with Reverend Bateman, and John must have remembered his promise for surprise. Tom called me the next day, and the day following. I let him simmer, managed to be quite busy. But then when he planned a party in my honor at the house I'd always been so crazy about... Well, how could I refuse? I found myself quite near him, talking to him, and uh, very comfortable there. Enjoying yourself? Mm, oh, yes. I had such a time getting you to go out with me. I want to be sure you enjoy yourself. Oh, you're being very considerate. Hope you don't think I was inconsiderate that day in the car. Huh? Oh, oh, I've forgotten all about it. Good, good. Down the mission today, Reverend Bateman was talking to me about you. Oh, he was? He thinks you're quite a fabulous individual. Oh, I like John, although I, I don't entirely agree with him. Oh, what do you mean? Well, I mean John's outlook, too abstract. <laughs> Perhaps. But let's not spend all evening talking about John. Let's talk about you. <laughs> Allow me to say that you look absolutely heavenly in your gown. Why, thank you. It's so noisy in here. Let's go outside a moment. Why not? Wind is down. <sighs> Still heavy weather, though, isn't it? Hmm? Oh, yes. Anything can happen in a storm, can't it? I'm wondering. Why well, wonder? The courageous know. It does take courage, doesn't it? To bring a plane down in this weather? <laughs> I suppose it does. No, I didn't mean exactly that. Uh, do you like planes? Mm, oh, in a very impersonal way. I, I like them for what they do, for what they can bring. That's all. I can't seem to keep up with you. Most people can't. Uh, shall we go back in? If you'd like. Ruth. Yes? Ruth, I may be crazy to say this. It may sound wild to you, but I've got to tell you. I'm mad about you. Oh, Tom. I am, Ruth. I'm asking you to marry me. I want you to be my wife. Oh, I know we've only known each other a short while. When, but... Tom? Darling, you're saying yes. I said when. Tonight, right now. Yes. Yes, we'll have John marry us. Where's Ruth? In fixing up. Oh, Ruth's a good girl. You can make her very happy. I'm going to try. She'll emphasize material things a little too much. You can help her there. I will. She's known what it means to go hungry. Yes, you've told me. Shh. Well, approve of the bride? An angel. You're very lovely, my dear. Ah, thank you. Of course, you know, this should be a big church wedding with a huge reception following it. Well, we can wait, darling, if you wish. Oh, no, no. No, I don't want to wait. Well, Mrs. Barkhurst, over the threshold <laughs> and into your new home. My new home. Oh, I guess I can really believe it now. Do you approve? Do I approve? I think I told you how I worshipped this house from the first time I ever saw it. I used to dream of it. I used to dream of it as a huge castle. Well, my darling, it turned out to be your castle, after all. Yes. Not that I really ever thought it could... Look, we can see the airfield from here. Oh, yes. You know, I'm unveiling our experimental model soon. Oh? And I'm going to give you the honor of naming her. Oh, thank you. I was thinking about it tonight. Oh, I have a thousand wonderful ideas for her. She's going to be superb. Tom, Tom, let's just talk of us tonight, shall we? Just us. Well, of course, I'm sorry, darling. You know... I used to think that I wanted this house more than anything in the world. But that isn't true. I want you, Tom. I want to know that you're mine. 
Tell me, Tom. Tell me. I had them both. My castle and Tom. Oh, those first three weeks were exciting, even though Tom was very busy with a new plane. It was fun, ruling my castle, planning surprises for him. Daisy, his housekeeper, was such a help. You rang for me, Mum? Yes, Daisy. Now, I want our dinner to be outstanding tonight. Yes, Mum. Now, tell me, what does Mr. Barkers like more than anything else? Well, Mum, Mr. Barkers just loves a certain dish, a concoction of his own. Well? Spare ribs, broiled, Uh and then served with a grape jelly sauce. Oh, how horrible. He thinks it's divine. Well, well all right, Daisy. Uh, that's what we'll have then. But, but, but fix something different for you and me before Mr. Barker comes home. Hmm? You ought to see her. Uh, oh, the new plane? Yes. Oh, she's beautiful. You really ought to come down. Well, I'm going to. Oh, you've been saying that. You won't make it till the unveiling. Unveiling? Oh, sure, darling. Remember, yours is the honor of naming her and christening her. Oh, all right, but... But, Tom, do we have to talk about that plane all the time? Well, what's the matter with that? Oh, it's all right, but well, you haven't even mentioned the dinner. Oh, it's good. It's very good. Oh, you think so? It's very It's a bit well done, but very tasty. Think of it. We'll have her in the air next week. There you go again. Well, say, what is this, anyway? What's wrong? What's wrong? Darling, I get just a little tired of hearing airplane, airplane, airplane every time you walk into this house. Now, wait a minute. Let's get something straight right now. We're going to be around airplanes for a long time. And if we are? Tom, I believe you actually think more of that plane than you do of me. Ruth. You must. That's all you ever speak of. You seem to have forgotten me and my feelings completely. You've changed. I don't even know Now, you. darling, please, I... I guess I have been pretty well wrapped up in that ship. Wrapped up? You've been involved. I'll tell you what, though. Next Tuesday is our first month's anniversary. Let's make a day of it, a big day together. Oh, Tom, why do I talk like I do? What do you say? A date? A date? Oh, and I love you very much. Sometimes I could kick myself for even raising my voice at Tom, but... Oh, I guess that's part of married life. Just think. Married. Almost a month. Oh, what would Tom surprise me with? On Monday night, he came home almost as excited as I was. Well, darling, you all set for tomorrow? That's our day. It certainly is. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding. Well, say, I guess I didn't tell you. We're unveiling the plane tomorrow. Overnight decision. We're what? Oh, but, Tom, our anniversary... I'm afraid that'll have to wait, Ruth. We made all the plans, invited in newspapers and magazines... But, Tom, why didn't you tell me? Oh, honey, I guess I just got wrapped up and... Well, I didn't know myself until yesterday. Well, you understand, don't you? Yes, Tom. I think I understand everything. We pause briefly from our story, Storm Center, starring Ruth Warwick, to bring you an important message from our government. America's finest men choose U.S. Army careers. For the high school graduate who likes a life with plenty of fast action, here's a new career opportunity that's made to order. Starting at once... Qualified young men without prior service may enlist directly for the infantry, field artillery, armored cavalry, corps of engineers, or the anti-aircraft artillery. That's right. No previous military experience required for membership in one of these fine branches of Army service. Choose any one of the five, and you've chosen the best in lifetime opportunity. The regular Army offers the alert, intelligent young man a new and effective means of getting to the top rapidly. Not only is advancement regular steadier in the peacetime army, but new career guidance gives each soldier a boost up the ladder. Lifetime security is yours, too, giving you real assurance financially now and for the future. Don't let this career opportunity slip by. Check with your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station now. Remember, America's finest men choose U.S. Army careers. Be one of these successful young men yourself. <laughs> 